Hi, I'm George Zimmer, founder and CEO of the Men's Warehouse. 9 slash 11 was a lie. There were no towel heads. There was no airplane. In truth I was visiting the Big Apple so as to compare my gargantuan meat train to it and laugh at the gasping New Yorkers as I pounded their beloved namazake into Big Apple sauce. Having not gotten release from my culinary exercise, I meander down the street with my vital blood and orange sewer pipe out in front of me like a blind man's cane, looking for a hole in the backside of a woman which I would stretch beyond human limits. I spotted at that very moment an attractive female in a miniskirt waving at me. I slapped her to the ground with my enormous phallus and quickly ravished her skirt like a starved dog on a baby made of steak. The sight that awaited both shocked and enraged me. After seeing this woman's raisin-sized winky winkler, I vomited down his throat and penetrated his esophagus, ripped out his spine and peeled his corpse from my money maker. To teach all of New York a lesson for letting this flaming fag bag live, I let loose a seminal flood of biblical proportions upon the towers of two, at whom small size I left like a clown raping an eight-year-old, which caused them to come crashing down like me after a weekend message. I mocked the New Yorkers and made nigger jokes as they ran from my ever-expanding cloud of spermazoa, masturbating to the looks of horror on their faces. The government, in an attempt to save face, and because they hate Arabs more than Jews, painted a Boeing 767 on my gigantic cock and called it a terrorist attack. The feeling of paintbrushes on my dick made me come again, and President Bush snorted up every last drop because he thought it was coke. Suddenly, he cried out, What's that amazing smell? Then a grossly obese Negro popped out from behind the burning, twisted wreckage of the World Trade Centers and quipped, That's the power of pine salt! Displeased at her interruption of my devastating sodomy conquest, yet simultaneously oddly aroused by a subhuman's defiance in the face of my titanic meat monolith, I grabbed the negress by her arms and inserted my battle cruiser of passion into the roiling waves of fat which obscured her vaginal cleft. She screamed into chifferably in ironics, so to shut her up I poured all the contents of the pine salt bottle down her throat. Unfortunately, the chemicals in the liquid combined with my unearthly super semen to form a highly unstable and explosive mixture of pure power. Just before the fat negress blew apart as a result of the incredible chemical reaction, my mother got scared and said, You're moving with your auntie and uncle in Bel Air. I whistled for a cab and when it came near, the license plate said fresh and it had ice in the mirror. If anything I could say that this cab was rare, but I thought, Nah, forget it, you holds to Bel Air. I pulled up to the house about seven or eight and I yelled to the cabbie, you olds, smell ya later. I looked at my kingdom, I was finally there, to sit on my throne as the Prince of Bel Air. Once I entered my new, palatial abode, almost, but not quite, worthy of my incalculably huge meat missile, I immediately swept my new foster parents aside and headed for the room of their young niece. You see, I just spent the last 20 minutes rubbing a 12-year-old girl's bare chest. How? You ask. Well, apparently there are a select few contexts within which such an action is acceptable. For instance, if your niece has a hacking cough and your sister asks you to put some of this on her while she calls the doctor. Putting some of this on here meant using my bare hands to rub this vapor ointment shit all over her bare naked chest. My heartbeat is still all erratic from it. I had a boner the size of Manhattan the entire time. She's sleeping now, and I guess she feels better because she stopped coughing. Details, she's about five feet tall, has long brown hair, a cute face, a thin waist and long skinny legs. 
She's in jammies, I think, because although I'm pretty shaken up right now, I know I unbuttled something before I went at it. God, I feel so great. I just rubbed my hands well over her fucking tits, you guys. Well, the puffy parts of her chest anyway. Her nipples got hard. I just about wept tears of joy. Obviously, there are very few things in this universe which can bring me to such a state, and combined with my incredible state of arousal, I was unable to hold back the storm brewing in my colossal pudding blaster. My steaming hot silver lava blasted out furiously, instantly killing my unfortunate young cousin and reducing my new home to blasted bits and pieces of wooden detritus. I guarantee it.